speedrun levels are incredibly common in Mario Maker 2. With each level uploaded having shown world records, it makes speedrunning in this game pretty fun. Nintendo obviously realized this as they decided to create a series of 20 speedrun levels known as Ninji Speedruns. I'm sure many of you already know what these are, but for newer players, these were levels that you could race in for about a week to see who could get the fastest time, with ninjis running around to represent other players' ghosts, like Mario Kart Time Trials. Since these are official levels created by Nintendo, they are very polished and well designed. These aren't just hold right to win levels, as each one of them tests the player's abilities in a multitude of situations. However, I do believe that some of them are definitely better than others, so today we're going to rank all 20 of them from worst to best. The main way I'll be ranking these is if they're fun to speedrun, as if they aren't fun, well then they're obviously not really that great. Notice how I said fun to speedrun. These are speedrun levels after all, so they have to at least fulfill their purpose there very well. I also think a good speedrun level will have a ton of different options to allow players to get a fast time. Some routes would be harder than others, but perfect levels would have easier routes that still feel satisfying to complete. That's why games like Mario Odyssey and Mario 64 are so popular to speedrun. There are so many different routes that players can take depending on their skill level. The last thing I want to emphasize for this ranking is a level's complexity and challenge. No level should be too easy, as then it would take the fun out of speedrunning it. I believe the perfect levels will have the players do several different tasks aside from holding right to the goal at all times, as that'd be a very boring level to speedrun. With those outlines said, I do want to make one more note before we start. After the first 10 ninjis, I sort of burnt myself out on the mode, and thus I didn't really play as much for the following 10, with a few exceptions of course. Their placements may end up being a bit weird, but I did grind them all down at least a little bit for this video. With that said, let's jump right into ranking all 20 ninji speedrun levels in Super Mario Maker 2. At number 20, we have pretty much the only level I knew the placement of definitively before even making this video, that being Swinging Claw Flyway. This is a huge personal gripe, but I do not enjoy trying to speedrun using claws. Don't get me wrong, they're a cool item, but they just don't go well with speedrunning in my opinion. They feel incredibly jank. Now, yes, I'm not the best player in the world, so I could just be being bad, but it's always incredibly annoying when you jump into a claw only to lose a ton of speed. They just don't feel very consistent, which makes this whole level feel unfun to grind. On top of that, this barely has any alternate routes from the main path. The ones it does have, i.e. these bumpers, feel super slow to use. It's not like the main route is hard though, in fact I'd argue this might just be the easiest ninji, but that just makes this whole level feel a whole lot less interesting. The final thing I don't like is this blue platform. It's not much, but all it does is slow down the player to basically a halt. It doesn't help that running into the claw after the platform is easily the most annoying part of the level. So with that said, Swinging Claw Flyway is easily the worst ninji speedrun level. At number 19, we have Cannon Box Blast. This is certainly a bit of an upgrade from the last one, but I always was mixed on this one as well. For one, it's based around the Cannon Box, an item already used in the far better Headgear Hustle level. I find this power-up to be annoying to use for a long stretch of time due to it being tied to the Run button. It makes releasing it feel unnatural because you have to jump back to holding it right away. Luckily though, this level does have a bit more going on. 3D World has some of the most complex movement in the game, so combining it with the Cannon Box isn't terrible. I do feel the level is a little bit cramped at the beginning, but it's still fine. One thing I appreciate is this portion in the subworld. The fastest way to do this involves shooting a very hard cannon shot to activate the exclamation mark block. Luckily, you could just jump up there and ground pound if you aren't confident in doing that, which feels decently fast. But then we have easily the worst part of the level. For whatever reason, in their speedrun level, they have a section where you have to wait for a pow block to drop to the bottom of the screen. Yes, you do have to hit an on-off switch, but that really is not hard at all, and thus there's really no way to make this go any faster. Nobody likes auto-scrollers or sections where you have to wait in a speedrun, because shocker, people watch speedruns to see speed. Had this section been changed, I likely would have moved this level up a spot or two, but for now, it's going to have to take number 19. At number 18, we have Drybone Shellscape. Now I know this may surprise you all coming from the dry bones for Smash Guy himself, but this level has a major flaw. Plus, it uses the dry bone shell and not dry bones himself anyway, so who really cares that much? The subworld in this level is really fun to do, as the setup for collecting the red coins the fastest is super creative. The ending isn't too bad as well, aside from them reusing this theme from the claw level at number 20. That could have been forgiven though, but there is just one thing about this level that brings it down so far on this list. That flaw is this boo ring right here. 
Normally, you have to use the Drybone Shell's unique ability to break all of Mario's bones to temporarily leave him invincible. The only problem? This is very, very slow. However, unlike the last level, there is a way around this. It's just that it is not fun to do at all. You have to jump out of the shell mid-air and regrab it, which is not hard to do, but then you have to do a one-frame jump between the boos. This jump is frame perfect, which means you are going to die here over and over and over and over again. Don't worry though, there is an alternate easier method. However, this too is incredibly inconsistent and will still lead to death most of the time. So really, you have the option to take this super unsatisfying slow route or the super tedious annoying fast route. Either way, it's sort of a lose-lose, so for that, it's going to have to take number 18. It did still have that cool sub-area though, which is what got it above the last two. At the Croak of Midnight is going to take number 17. It's technically our only underwater ninja level, and they actually do a pretty good job. From this point on, the levels have a lot less problems. Obviously, I don't like underwater as much as on land levels like every other sane human being, but the frog suit makes it bearable. Warning, this does not mean I like the power-up. I still think it's the worst in the game, but it's used here well. Anyways, you have to collect 100 coins here. There are significantly more than that in the level though, which means it's pretty open for several different routes. The one I took is pretty satisfying to do. The only real annoying bit for me is the babam. You're supposed to make it hit the note block to collect the 10 coin, however it is, in my experience, quite finicky to work with and will often blow up way too far away. This isn't too bad though, certainly much better than the frame-perfect jump in the last level. The themes used here are mixed to me. One, I think the Nighttime Castle is easily SMB3's best looking theme, I just love the orange a ton. On the other hand though, I don't like the dark levels like the underwater night theme. Luckily, it's not intrusive once you have a route planned, but it's still a bit annoying. With that said, there's really not much more to this level, just a pretty satisfying test of the frog suit. Goombud Bust Up is at number 16, though it was pretty difficult to place. The theme of this level is using the various fire power-ups to brutally murder 35 Goombuds. Unlike the last level, you have to defeat all of them, though none of them are really that far out of the way for this to be annoying. You do spend a good bit of the level on the ground, however there's a big section taken up by using a clown car. These are quite slow, making them not ideal for a speedrun in my opinion. Additionally, the part with a bunch of frozen coins feels pretty uninspired and is quite tedious. The end of the level is also really annoying as it's super easy to miss one of the Goombuds with your Fire Flower where you then have to start all over from the beginning. Now that was a lot of bad parts, however there are still quite a few good things. I like sniping the Goombuds with the Yoshi at the start and I love the Thwomp here. It allows you to get a boost if you're more experienced, however it's not necessary for a satisfying time in the level. Overall, this level is okay, like the last one. In fact, these are pretty interchangeable, but I would still place this one slightly above the last one due to this one having more fun ground movement. Bonsai Bill Cliff Climb lands itself at number 15. This level has Mario need to climb up a tall vertical sub area while avoiding Bonsai Bills and Cannonballs. Before making this video, I thought I would end up placing this much higher. However, upon replay, there was one jump that made this quite annoying. Before we get to that though, the rest of the level is pretty solid. It's fun to try and control your jump heights to be able to jump as fast as possible up the sub area. The only jump I wasn't a fan of was this one right here. In order to make this jump from the platform up to this ledge, you have to slow Mario down at just the right time to be able to jump far enough around this ledge, but not too far to where you can't wrap back around on top of it. This is certainly much less annoying than the Boo Ring jump, however it's still quite tedious. Other than that though, this level is a fun challenge in speedrunning vertical levels. At number 14 we have Cape Mario Master. As the name implies, this is a test of using the Cape Feather. This is one of my favorite power-ups in the game, at least to use. In my opinion, this is also a power-up incredibly difficult to design a level around due to just how easy it makes things to cheese. Luckily, they get around that problem in this level by requiring the player to once again collect 100 coins before finishing. There are three main portions of the level. The first section has you use the cave's main flying ability, the second mostly focuses on the spin jump, and the final area requires a bit more precision as to where you use your cape. I definitely think this level peaked at the start. It's a ton of fun flying to collect as many coins as you can. It's also decently difficult as well, with many easy to miss coins. The sub area is a bit annoying since you have to control the spin jump in a somewhat tight area without getting caught on anything. The third section is once again a downgrade, as trying to collect the coins while still killing the moles is much more annoying than it looks. Overall, this is still a fun level, I just wish they were able to keep the energy from the beginning going throughout it.
squirrely airship Escapades lands itself at number 13. Much like the previous level, this focuses on a specific power-up, in this case the Super Acorn. I also quite enjoy using this one as well, not quite as much as the cape, but this one is certainly much more balanced. My favorite part of this level is the jump at the start since it feels really satisfying to just barely be able to make this without losing speed. This does, however, have quite the annoying fastest route with it requiring you to damage boost and barely make it through this thwomp before continuing on. Luckily though, I did say this was a route as there are multiple different options to get around this. The fastest I was able to do is going on top before dropping down into the cannon section to avoid a seesaw platform. Unfortunately, this cannon section is way too cramped in my opinion as it's difficult to get through without clinging to the walls. Still though, the annoying parts of this level are way less prominent than the last one unless you decide to take the fastest route. With that said, boosting with the Super Acorn does feel decently slow, however that does make it more satisfying when you use as little of the boost as possible. So overall, aside from the cannon section, this one is pretty solid. Big Shoes Gustin in the Desert gets to take number 12. This level is pretty interesting, it requires Mario to put on several different kinds of Goomba Drip to make it through several different sections of the level. This involves stomping on or by enemies, flying to higher places, and stomping through blocks. Each of these required a different type of shoe, and the way they transitioned between them was a bit shaky to me. Sometimes it wouldn't let me get into the other boots even though I swear I was jumping into it. The gameplay though was fun for the most part, the winged shoe section did feel a bit slow, but it wasn't too bad. I'm placing this level above the last two because its consistency is a bit better. Not by a lot, but I still found myself having fun for longer in this one. At number 11, we have Cat Mario Dash. This was the first 3D World Ninja, so of course I had to focus on the cat suit. I feel like compared to the last few power-ups, this is much better suited for a speedrun setting, despite me not really liking it as much. The cat dive alone makes the movement here quite a bit more interesting, as it was fun to try to find the best places to use it. In fact, unlike the other two I mentioned, this level is pretty strong throughout the entire duration, peaking with the ending segment. The really only elements I'm not a huge fan of were the Piranha Creepers. I think most people can agree that these are some of the most annoying enemies in Mario Maker 2. Their hitboxes are always incredibly janky and speedrunning around them just simply isn't that fun. Had there only been this one, I think this level would have been much better, but they threw in a second one that requires an annoying jump swipe to kill quickly. The rest of the level is pretty fun though, which lands it just outside of the top 10. At number 10, we coincidentally have the level, the 10 coin in the deep woods. Much like Bonsai Bill Cliff Climb, this mostly takes place in a vertical sub area. However, it's focused on both descending and ascending rather than just going up. This level is also pretty lenient on allowing the player to take small slowdowns, which I think makes it a lot better. For example, it's optimal to not twirl in the air while going down. However, you still can do it without losing much time. Basically, a trade for a bit of speed for more safety. It's a ton of fun to try and avoid the piranhas at the start, and my personal favorite part of the level is the simple wall jump off the question mark block at the very start to grab the mushroom fastest. In fact, there's really no annoying part of this level. The only reason it's not higher up is because it simply feels a bit slow returning back to the surface. It's not annoying to perform since it's mostly just wall jumping, but this doesn't feel as fast or complex as the rest of the top 10. From this point on, the levels don't really have any glaring flaws, so it was pretty difficult to rank them. But as of now, this level is going to take number 10. The first ninja level, Rolling Snowballs, takes number 9. This was meant to show off the spikes, snowballs, and pokies as they were all new to this update. Mainly though, I think this level focuses on movement of slopes. Slopes are a very important part to getting world records in Mario Maker 2 levels. It's important to know when to slide, when not to, or when to avoid going on a slope entirely. This level does a pretty good job teaching that, as the slopes are really the only way to save time on this level as it's completely a hold right to win level. In that way, it's a bit less interesting, though I do feel the multiple routes and the fun execution of sliding down slopes makes up for it a bit. This is definitely the simplest ninja we got, though it was still fun to do, giving it number 9. At number 8, we have the level Balloon Race. This is very different from the other levels just due to how different the people loon controls. This level is much closer to a Mario Kart time trial as this is mostly focused on taking turns as tightly as possible. This reference is further sold by the countdown at the start and of course the Mario Kart music used. This level just feels super satisfying to save time on as it always feels like there's at least a little bit you can do better. It also helps that there's a star at the halfway point which adds to the speed a ton. The only thing I wasn't huge on was having to collect big coins at the end. It came off to me as a cheap way to extend the playtime without really adding too much, but it wasn't too bad and doesn't get in the way of enjoying this level. One funny thing I wanted to mention as well, I looked up the record for this and it uses so many pause buffers on every turn which is just really funny to me. I don't think you can actually pause buffer in these levels anymore so I bet this record is now near impossible to take. Either way, this is an incredibly unique and fun level that uses the pea balloon in a very creative way.
Yoshi Piranha Plant Picnic is at number 7, but it's a level I completely forgot about before making this video. I don't know why though, because I really enjoyed writing this one down when it first came out. This level features Yoshi where he has to try and take out all 25 piranha plants infesting the level. There are several different ways this can be done, mainly using Yoshi's tongue, a Koopa shell, and dry bones bones. This level just flows really nicely, especially if you use the fastest route. Everything just works out perfectly with these shells and bones. I especially like this shot here, which you use to take out this plant initially, but then the three bones continue on and also take out these piranha plants later on. Executing these throws at the perfect times are also really satisfying. The only reason this level isn't higher is because of this shell shot at the beginning. You have to take out all four of the piranha plants in a row and re-grab the shell, which is kind of difficult to do. It's not that bad though, and it's really satisfying when you do it, and the rest of the level is super fun to grind down, giving this number 7. SMB2 Mario Can You Dig It at number 6 is a level I, in hindsight, really regret not grinding down when it was released. As I said, after the first 10, I really felt burnt out on the whole ninji concept, but I really wish I took the time to do this level at least a little bit. This is focused on the SMB2 Mushroom, but more specifically its ability to dig up clouds and snowballs from the ground in snow levels. It's just a really fun level to dig up the clouds as fast as possible while avoiding snowballs and using them yourself. I also appreciate the small shortcut you get if you collect the cursed key, and it's also a ton of fun to jump on top of the moving snowball to gain a ton of momentum. Once again, this level does unfortunately have one part I don't really like. Luckily though, it's in the first 4 seconds of the level. In order to do this first screen the fastest, you want to jump between the snowball from the spike and the piranha plants. However, the timing of this jump is unfortunately pretty unpredictable. It is technically possible to control when spike throws it, but it's pretty annoying so it feels out of your control. I'm happy this is at the start though, and it's not nearly as annoying as some of the other small portions of levels we mentioned before. Additionally, you could jump on top of the snowball from the spike without losing too much time, which makes this a little bit more tolerable. One other thing I want to mention is that the slippery physics don't get annoying at all, it actually adds some technique to building up more speed in my opinion. Overall, this might actually be my favorite level using the SMB2 Mushroom. That in turn does also make it quite fun to speedrun, putting it at number 6. Kicking off the top 5, we have the final ninji level, Bowser's Castle, The Last Dash. This ninji lasted two whole weeks opposed to the normal one week, and of course I had to grind this one down since it was the final ninji. What I really like about this one is that there are two main routes that aren't too far apart in terms of speed. The fastest takes place entirely in the main area, however the second one takes place in the sub area with only a small hit to your speed. I enjoyed the second one much more, so that's where I grinded down the most. This involves using a propeller suit along with a fire Yoshi to carve a path through to get a key to enter the door in the main sub area. My personal favorite part of this whole level was how this on-off switch lined up so perfectly. Normally to exit the section you have to of course hit this switch, however there's a Blasta Koopa and if you go slightly out of your way to hit the switch from below, the bullet will actually hit the switch again once you leave, opening up new paths. This level just requires a ton of tight execution throughout the whole thing, which makes it super satisfying when you are eventually able to complete it. The only reason this isn't higher is due to the fast route. This is incredibly annoying, especially the part where you have to spam jump with the star and fire flower to eliminate these blocks. Luckily, this level did have that alternate, much better route that still feels incredibly fast, which brought this up to the number 5 spot. The number 4 spot is taken by the 10th ninji level, Player's Choice Power-Up Party. This was a really special one as it allows you to take one of four different power-ups right at the start. This opened up this level to have a ton of different routes for each of them, however the one I and many others ended up sticking with was the Boomerang Flower. Anyways, there's no real annoying parts to this level, the only reason it didn't make the top 3 is because those are all incredibly good, and this one I just found a bit difficult to build speed up on, if that makes sense. Each section though works super well, and there's many different ways to do each challenge, making this a very solid ninja level. On to that top 3 now with the Speed Venture of Link. This of course focuses on the Master Sword power-up and all of the different abilities it has. Simply put, this level uses all of them perfectly and it flows together very nicely. It's fun to position and pull out your bombs as quickly as possible. This sword slash between these springs to jump off the spike ball for a shortcut is also really well done, and avoiding everything in the subworld also has a great challenge to it. None of the tricks are too hard, but there's a lot of room to save small amounts of time and that feeling of progress is what made this level feel so great. The only reason this didn't quite make number 1 is because the ending feels a bit slow, but other than that, this level uses all of Link's abilities really well. At number 2 we have the level I easily grinded down the most being the 35th anniversary Auto Mario. First off, the concept of this level is very neat. It's one of those incredibly common auto levels, but it's designed in a way to make speedrunning on it more fun. It also provides the by far funniest graph of any ninji since you can see a majority of the players completed it with the exact same time. 
Aside from just the idea though, the execution of all the techniques needed in this level feels super satisfying. You start with a somewhat tricky jump onto the spring for speed, but then you have to hit a P-switch. It was always fun to try and hit the block and then try to get the switch as fast as possible. It was difficult, but it was fun to see how I improved doing it over time. Then you get a star for the rest of the level, which makes this feel like the fastest paced ninja of them all, adding to the fun. Jumping as late as possible on this conveyor to barely miss the bonsai bill and jumping just at the right time to not lose any time to the thwomp all add to this level's building amount of satisfying moments. With this being the fastest paced ninja by far, with many complex inputs and a lot of room for improvements, why is this not number one? Well, to be honest, I think I'm just a slight bit salty, because this has another frame-perfect jump in it. I have never been able to perform this jump. Luckily, you can grab the vine, which barely loses any time, but it was just enough for me to not be able to get that ninja medal. By the end of the competition, I was able to place 289th place with the vine grab, which I'm certainly happy with, but having a frame-perfect jump just makes going for the record not feel that fun anymore. Still though, unlike the other level with the frame perfect jump, the backup here makes the level worth grinding down, and the sheer speed Mario is able to gain in this level makes it at least the runner up. And at number 1, we have one that I'm not sure if it'll be controversial or not. My personal favorite ninja level was Headgear Hustle. This level focused on using all 5 of the 3D World headgear pieces to collect red coins, and each of them are used perfectly. Well, aside from the bullet bill mask, since you don't actually use it in the run. Now, I'm sure you may be asking, why did I decide to place this one up so high? Well, to me, this one was just the most fun to perform all of the tricks. It's certainly not nearly as fast as the last level, but I think it's a bit more complex, and it doesn't even have any frame-perfect tricks that you need to learn. Each section was basically like the P-Switch in the last level. They all had so much room to be able to improve, whether it be zooming down as fast as possible after collecting the second pink coin, firing the cannonballs at just the right positions, or taking the tightest turns with the Goomba mask. This level just made it feel like you were constantly having to do different things, especially since it changed Mario's moveset several times throughout it. Unlike, say, the Goomba Shoe level, putting on the masks does not feel tedious at all since they're all placed in an easy-to-grab spot before you even get there. 3D World also has much more complex movement options than the original Super Mario Bros, adding in more techniques that need to be taken into account. This is the first one I really can't think of any negative for. Granted, a lot of the other levels had very, very minor negatives, but I just find this level to be near perfect for speedrunning, which is why I'm going to be giving Headgear Hustle the number one spot on this list. But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you all sad they didn't make a ninja level solely based around the big mushroom? Let me know in the comments. I wanted to do something different for this video, that being using a totally different editing software. I decided to use Premiere for this video since I want to start learning it so I can do much more complex edits in the future. I've used this for certain edits in previous videos and as a few transitions in others, but this is the first time I'm fully making a video using this, so hopefully it turns out alright. If the edits were on the lamer or sloppier side this time around, or if the video just feels slightly different, now you'll know why. Anyways, dry bones for smash, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.